something that they have shared regarding time. No, I'm, I'm going to wait on that. Um, on the worship of the isness. Now, one of the first questions that I had for them um, when I was a little boy, th- these, these contacts started when I was eight years old, and I was vacationing in the upper pen- northern peninsula of Michigan. Um, my family was living in Illinois at the time, Elk Grove Village, Illinois, and my grandparents owned a cabin up near uh, the Woodstock Crooked Lake area of, of northern Michigan. And uh, we used to go up there every summer, and uh, it, was, it was awesome. It was just an awesome place. And the, uh, the first contact, um, we had gone out into some fields to, to, we had all the family there. It was a big gathering, all the cousins, and we were on a family picnic. And we went up there to, to we went out to this huge field where the picnic area was, and it was very high grass and acorn trees everywhere, uh, chestnut trees, and we went out to uh, play hide-and-go-seek. Because the grass was tall, a lot of us would just lay down on the grass and we would just hang out. Well, that's what I did. And it was, you know, mid-afternoon. Um, I don't know the exact time because, you know, children don't pay attention to that. But when I, when I came back and I realized that I was on the ground, it was nighttime. But what had happened was I had fallen asleep. And the next thing I remember is I am on this table. And there are two gentlemen standing on either side of me, Viseas and Moran Now what's interesting is that I had an absolute instant recognition of who they were. And I cannot explain it, other than it was a soul connection. But you know when you meet somebody you know you just know them? It was one of those. And they were very, very sensitive, they were very warm, they were very friendly. Um, I didn't feel an, a moment of fear whatsoever. And I remember them helping me sit up and I'm just looking and I'm, well, where am I? And Phasea said, well, you are with us. And I said, well, where's that? And he said, well, you are aboard our craft. We have come back to visit you. And at that point, monitors, the, the walls were just like this, right here. Okay, but round circular. There was a light in the room that I simply don't know where it came from because there, there were no light fixtures whatsoever. Um, the table was just some kind of a metal table with a pad on it, except it it was a different type of metal. And all of a sudden, monitors start popping out from the walls, like out of nowhere. Turns out that this is their holographic technology, all this instrumentation. And all of these things were showing me pictures and uh, things of of going on that were going on inside my body. At one point, Viseas reached under the table, pulled out something which looked like a little yarmulke, Uh, It was metallic that had a a hole in the center. He placed it on my head, and instantly a monitor directly in front of me pulled out of the wall and started showing me scenes, like uh, movie clips, except they were scenes from lifetimes. And as I'm watching this, I am having a profound emotional effect watching this. And I know that that's me. I knew that the past lives that they were showing me were me. And it was me in completely different bodies, extraterrestrial bodies, different life forms, male, female, androgynous, and it was me. And I knew it was me. Ladies and gentlemen, it was profound. It was absolutely profound. They told me that they had come back to visit because genetically, or on a soul level, I was part of them, that I had come here 62,000 years ago as an outpost on Earth and got, in, got caught between a skirmish between two other rival extraterrestrial races here, and I was killed. So I had been here for a while trying to evolve out of this. Or I made choices to be here. I don't exactly know that. Now, I know I can't prove any of this to you, but it's real for me. It's totally real for me. And I share that with you because as you're exercising discernment, those of you who are here just exploring, trying to figure it out, you are soul first. 
Okay, the physicality is the last part of you. You are soul first. And the soul is far wiser than the body will ever, ever be. And I know that. Okay, so that, this, this was very real in Israel for me. Um, on December... In 1993, a color sound frequency started emanating from all the black holes in the known universe. It hap it's, it's happening on all the levels. This is the Andromeda perspective. This color sound frequency was creating a brand new holographic template over the entire density mass of our universe. Now, apparently, Within that holograph, there were conscious beings. The A's do not know who they are, but those that they're talking to, their mentors from higher uh, evolutions or higher densities, have said that they have the ability to be at their level, this 12th density, and look directly down through all the densities, that they have this ability. It is said that this template is literally pulling all of the dimensions up to another higher frequency. And what we're going through here with shifts, with new dimensional shifts, with higher frequencies, with expanded consciousness, so are the other extraterrestrial races. They're going through the exact same thing as we are, but it's different for them. Okay, they are much more aware consciousness. They probably have not suppressed any of the technology from their people. So they, they know what's happening. And they are all moving together because of the law of consistency. They are all moving together. They all have the same similar goal, and that's of evolution. Okay? Spiritual evolution. And moving together as a race, as a family. They're, they're coming back here to try to help mentor us for that. Because of who we are, whether we're Patal or not, okay, we are genetic royalty. I have absolutely no doubt about that. And that in itself is remarkable, especially when you consider when we've lived on this planet, everything that we've been taught about who we are. Um, you know, religions have punished us profoundly. Science says we're just a pool of chemicals that was created by a mistake. Um, it's just, it's remarkable. Um, but we're none of that. We're absolutely none of that. And my guess is, is that we had this planned all along. Um, we planned this struggle all along to grow, to evolve to make a statement to the rest of the universe. Um, okay. Um, I want to share, in their words, some of the things that they've shared with me. Um, I'm going to talk about consciousness. The most necessary action for all of your Terran races who are aware is to do what you are capable of to illuminate your degenerated societies. Consciousness is your scale. It always provides balance, which does not ever fail. It speaks to those who listen and tells them what to do and what not to do. Not one, um, to one or all beings who choose to be evolved, the administrators of your government are responsible for professional order, but not your moral codes of order. The key to your happiness, Terrans, is in the hands of your own consciousness. You are per we have perceived that you, Terrans, have arranged your lives not according to your...